Okay, besides craving my pants for a potential leak of a uh, upcoming skin for Dislight, hint, Drew had that drip. Um, I have another uh, rambling here, and it's kind of, it, it's another gameplay. What if? Uh, falling off of the uh, the payday three theory that that shit video, in my opinion, I had my idea for potential characters that they could have or may release that Overkill may make for the Payday 2 universe, which at this point I don't think they will, like after, you know, them finishing up that story and introducing um the fuck was that a uh, museum guy? Can you remember his name? Um just, you know, after they add him in, they were basically done with characters and perk decks, but there could have been so many other characters that they could have added in that actually could have been a part of the heisting lifestyle. Because that was kind of a thing that I noticed about the majority of the characters. They were either licensed characters or oddball, out-of-the-blue fucking heisters. Like, let me just take a look. At, at some of them. Of, of the Payday Gang. And you have the original characters. Dallas, Chains, Hawks, and Wolf. You have Houston. That made sense. Clover also made a little bit of sense as well. Since, you know, she was like a protege to Hawkston. Oh, Duke. That's what that museum motherfucker was. And it's like a couple of them I could also see as well. Sydney I can also see as a heister. Because, you know... She was also trying to rob a bank when she crossed paths with the Payday Gang. As much as I dislike her, you know, Bonnie. She's, you know... Eh. And then, you know, there's Bodie. The, you know, the fucking discount fucking Bodie from uh, Point Break. But some of these people just don't make sense. You know? Like fucking Ethan Hilla. No. Just no. And then, you know, John Wick, like, his life is an assassin. What is he doing robbing banks? And as much as I love the character Jacket, he's just a psychopath from Hotline Miami. Then you got Jimmy, Jiro, Sokol. You just have, like, a bunch of people. I mean, fucking God forbid you have Rust, a fucking biker. Then you have Scarface. Like, what the fuck are you doing, Scarface? Uh, Tony Montana. Aren't you supposed to be in fucking Florida running a drug trade? What are you doing fucking Washington robbing banks? I figured you'd make a lot more money selling fucking drugs. Some of these characters didn't make sense, and I feel like some of the characters they added in didn't appeal to the heisting ideology, so to speak, of Payday 2, or the or the games in general. So, uh, I'm hoping, or I was hoping, that they would add in some more heisting characters. A couple ideas I had in mind that I feel that could have worked out well is, for starters, um, the Heat characters especially considering there's a uh, a mission from the past game and a remastered mission pay two called heat street which took inspiration from the film heat done by michael mann they could have easily have added in a couple of the characters from that where it would be you know getting robert de niro's likeness for his character val kilmer it could have been a good fucking job to introduce them into the fucking heisting universe it could have been nice to have them with their fucking I guess a variation of the AR-15 because, you know, the, 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 the Amcar took inspiration from the Heat films as well. And they could have just added them in there. I don't know what their perk deck could have been, but it could have been something along the lines of maybe crowd control or laying down covering fire. The help of the fucking, you know, the Heat uh, mechanic from the guns. Because, you know, there's like the idea if you keep firing shots, it'll cause... The, the guards to, like, j jump to the ground more. They could have done something with that. But I just kind of liked them. It would have been nice if they could, like, add their characters in it. Especially, you know, to have their iconic lines of, you know, there's heat around the corner, you gotta drop it and go, or some shit. Completely fucking butchered that line. Forgive me, Michael Mann. But beyond that, another two characters they could have added for another noticeable heisting game for its time is Kane and Lynch. And that one could have been a little bit more fun in terms of the arcade style, because you could have, like, two completely separate perks 
with the two characters, you know, uh, fucking Kane being a lot more cool-minded and, you know, focused on the job, and Lynch being the more psychopath of the fucking gang. But it'd have been nice, you know, they could have just had their fucking, you know, out, like, you know, their character models, Lynch having the sunglasses and the fucking balding hair, to, you know, Kane having the busted fucking nose, and him having his signature gun, the the SIG 556, even though the commander's already in there, they could add in a variation to it, and Lynch having a new fucking shotgun of sorts. They could have fucking fit in the fucking heisting world as well. And probably the one character I wanted the most, since, you know, they actually did the fucking collaboration with them, but sadly it was more side characters and just as a mission. Like, I love the missions themselves, but, like, the character add-ons... There was nothing for me. It was just side characters. A Reservoir Dogs character pack. <clears throat> this was kind of like one of those lightning bolt moments I had a couple days ago that made me write it down. Was they could have had a Mr. Blue character. Now, I'm not talking about the old-ass Mr. Blue from the films. It could just be like a brand new character. The only reason why you call him Mr. Blue is because, you know, it resonates with the color theme of Payday 2. Fuck it. Call him Mr. Teal if you want. Whatever. And, you know, you could have had his fucking, you know, Reservoir dial Dials. Dials. Reservoir Dog style get up. And, uh... Have him... Uh, they even have the Reservoir Dog sunglasses in as an infamy reward. Give it to him as, like, a... Give him a unique pair of the shades. Since, if I'm right, every single color from the film had, like, unique shades, they could have given a unique pair instead. And it could have been an introduction for the Smith & Wesson handgun, because if you saw my, uh, Trank ranking for Metal Gear Solid 3, or, well, the Trank guns ranking for the Metal Gear Solid series, I have a soft spot for the Mark 22 because it looks like a Smith & Wesson pistol. I just like the design of it between the, uh, enlarged uh, back sights and just the frame of the gun, the nickel plane. It, just, it looked like a great gun. So they could introduce that as well as a potential handgun you could have used. And for the perk deck, um, I don't know if this perk deck exists. I might as well do my fucking research here just to make sure. Uh, perk deck. So let's, let's see if it exists. Okay, it doesn't. I know there's... A skill tree called the professional or the ghost but they could have added a professional perk deck for you know the reservoir dogs character and it could have been around being a professional in the field not killing civilians and just focusing on cops and in terms of that you know maybe for every hogtied civilian that you have in the field or you know a hostage is a cop maybe you'll get some bonuses i know there was something similar to that to the um, original perk deck, the uh, the crew chief, but it could have been expanded upon one to give you more options or more statistical benefits instead, you know, whatever the fucking um, crew chief gives you. And who knows, maybe there could still be penalties or benefits from killing civilians as well. But, I mean, it just depends on how they fucking worked on it. But from there, I mean... The sky's the limit in terms of heisting characters. I know there's probably a bunch of other fucking noticeable heisting films I probably, you know, <clears throat> totally forgot. Um, one that uh, comes to mind. Uh, I, I forgot the film, maybe it was called Stolen, but... Have that uh, one heisting character that Nicolas Cage did. Oh my god, imagine if fucking Nicolas Cage became a, uh, a character in fucking Payday 2. That would have been a better fucking character than fucking, you know, fucking Ethan and Hilla. Fuck the YouTubers. Give me fucking Nicolas Cage. That would have been fucking better. Let me see if I can get a little more gold. Let me see if I can get a little more coke. You know? Could have worked. You could have had some fucking memorable one-liners. But... Beyond the typical heisting characters, a, a dream character that I wish would have came into Payday 2, it's a, it's a guilty pleasure because he's like kind of my hero of sorts in the gaming universe because he kind of like 
made me realize, oh, I'm a pathetic gamer. That's what I'll always be. But at least I'll take some pride in it. Travis touched out of No More Heroes fame. That character could have been so fucking awesome, you know? As much as it would have been like a cringe, out-of-ball, left-field fucking character, I feel Overkill could have gotten in touch with, uh, you know, Suda51 to have the character in there. You know, he's down on his luck. He's not getting a lot of assassin jobs. You know, Bane contacts his fucking otaku assassin to rob a few banks. And he's just like, oh, you know what? Yeah, fuck it. You know, I need some money to pay off my uh, my rental fees to buy a couple of new figures. Hell yeah. It'd be the perfect draw for Travis. And then, you know, from there, he has his fucking otaku uh, fucking perk deck where he can get some benefits for doing some, like, over-stylized kills like, have, like, there, there be an extra effect where if he has the otaku or maybe a different perk deck if it doesn't work well, a gamer perk deck, so to speak, where, like, the more kills you get, you rack up a high score. And maybe depending on the threshold for what score you get, you'll do more damage or take less damage. And the blood and gore effects will be over dramatized to represent, you know, the No More Heroes style. Because that was, like, one of the things about No More Heroes that, uh, it was in the lens of, like, how Travis views the world he views as a video game. That's why it's, like, the gore's over the top. There's the retro-style HUD, etc., etc. But, yeah, you know, that could work for, like, a gamer deck. And in terms of, like, the otaku deck, I don't know. Let it be, like, a melee-centric build. Where maybe he gets bonuses for, like, katana or ninja-like weapons. So it kind of forces you in a particular play style, but it, it fits his theme. And maybe let it also work for, like, makeshift weapons. Who knows? But I feel like the gamer perk deck works a lot more. And then, you know, just get fucking Robert Akin down. So, you know, do some voice lines. Let the bloodshed begin! It's game time! You know, just let him have his fucking lines. It'd be fucking awesome. Especially to hear how, you know, he would react towards going up against, you know, Washington's finest fucking corral of fucking unlimited cops and in terms of his weaponry since there was some artwork on one of travis's cards i actually want to look it up right now thank god for google uh it was card number 98 in the original no more heroes game and it looks like he has like a makeshift blaster that looks like the dl44 blaster that han solo uses so it kind of like represents the nerd culture he's coming from so to speak so give him some sort of like unique gun like that like a makeshift otaku weeb handgun that he just made himself and then give him his glorious beam katana or the uh rose nasties from fucking uh no more heroes 2 which i still have to fucking play but um yeah, that kind of devolved into a fucking No More Heroes jerk fest. But those are just some of my ideas in terms of, like, actual heisting characters they could have added in. And my dream character as well. Like, the sky's the limit in terms of how many characters they could have added in. But I guess because of licensing fees, them trying to just shovel out content to put the lights on, which I completely understand. It's justified. And, you know... Obviously, the extra work they probably would have had to go into adding in more rooms to the safe house. They're obviously not going to add in any new characters anytime soon. But, I mean, it would be nice if they did. Because I know there was, like, one character they had in there in terms of the idea of, you know, of a fucking cough that was turned. Because I know they have that idea where you can convert a cough. There was, I know there was on the red ages ago, there was, you know, that community thing for, like, build your own heist or, you know, Overkill was gonna, you know, feature it in the game. There was one where a converted cop just works for the fucking payday game, gang. It actually sounded really fucking cool. And it was centered around, you know, the converting perk deck. But no, they went for fucking Duke. Like, no offense towards Duke, but fuck it. Fuck that history, nerd. Give me the fucking converted cop, please. But yeah, those are some of my ideas for, like, potential future or dream fucking heisting characters and again my hero travis uh usual chant like dislike comment subscribe let me know what characters you would have wanted to see in the payday universe 
You know, since we got various YouTubers and movie characters, I don't see why they couldn't have added in some other wacky characters from other licensed universes. I mean, fuck, now I forgot. A little bit of a mention they could add in the fucking characters from that Papel Netflix show. Wherever the fuck it was, those uh, guys that wear the red jumpsuits, they could have done that as well, but... Eh, who knows, only time will tell. Maybe they'll make an appearance in Payday 3. That could have been a theory. There you go, five-second theory. New licensed characters possibly coming in Payday 3, who knows. But, yeah, just want to get that little bit of a rambling out of the way. Uh, bye.